today we are going to look at how you can make stunning PowerPoint presentations in 3D. And you can make them look like this. We'll start with how you can use 3D objects that come with PowerPoint. Then we'll look at how you can find 3D objects of just about anything. And finally, we'll even look at how you can create your own 3D objects using the magic and power of AI. Let's check this out. Here I am in PowerPoint, and feel free to follow along. I would like to insert a 3D shape onto this slide. So how do we do that? Well, up on top, let's click on the Insert tab. And right here in the center, there is a category for illustrations. Right up on top, we have an option called 3D Models. When I click on this dropdown, we have two different options. You can insert a 3D model from this device. And later on, we'll do that. But for now, let's use the option that says Stock 3D Models. These are stock 3D models that come with PowerPoint. Let's click on this. This drops me into the stock 3D models, and there are many different options here that you can play with. Up at the top, you'll notice that some of the categories have this running person icon. When you click on that, you'll see all the different models that have advanced animations attached to them. So just something to be aware of if you want to test some of them out. Now, I want to pull together some slides for the Kevin Cookie Company. So let's see if they have any 3D models of, let's say, a cookie. Here we see a few different options. Here are some cookie cutters. Let's see down here, here's a gingerbread man. But I noticed at the very top, there was also a 3D model of a chocolate chip cookie, and that looks pretty delicious. I'll select this one and then click on insert. This now drops a 3D model of a cookie onto my slide. When I click on the cookie and I hover over the center, you'll see that my mouse icon changes. When I press and then move my mouse around, I can adjust the 3D orientation of this cookie. Here when I release, we now see this icon that allows me to twist it around to whatever spot I want. That's pretty neat. Up on top, you'll also see that there's now a new tab called 3D Model. And over here on the left-hand side, here I have these different preset 3D model views. So maybe I want the cookie to look like this, or here I could maybe go with a bottom view. When I expand this category here, I have all of these different preset views. Lots of different options, and at least in my opinion, they all look very good. Over on the right-hand side here, I can also adjust the layer. So if I want to bring it forward, send it back, and I could also adjust things like the alignment. Over here, when I click on this icon, this opens up a pane over on the right-hand side that gives me even more control over what this 3D model looks like. Here, I can adjust things like the rotation, so if I really want to fine tune it and get it to look an exact way that I want it. Right here, I could also click on this icon, and this also shows me a number of different preset views. One of the neat things over here, I could click on this icon, and here, maybe I add a shadow. So let's select, let's go with maybe this one, and there I now have a shadow for my 3D object. So you have lots of ways to get this to look exactly how you want it to look. For now, I'll close this pane. One of the great things about inserting a 3D model into a PowerPoint is that you can also apply animations to your object. Up on top, let's click on the Animations tab. And here we see all of the different animations that you can apply to an object. When I click on this dropdown right here, you'll see that there's a category for 3D animations. So let's test some of these out. Here I'll click on Arrive. And there you see the cookie slowly rotate or arrive in. Here I could also apply a turntable. And look at that, we get that nice gentle rotation. I can also select swing, and here it swings my cookie back and forth. Or we could even go with jump and then turn. One of the neat things is you can also click into effect options. So maybe instead of jumping and turning, maybe I want it to flip. And there we have the cookie flip. So you have lots of different ways that you could customize the animation and get it to look exactly how you want it to look. With animations in PowerPoint, there are so many different ways to customize your animation. If you're interested in learning all about animations in PowerPoint, be sure to check out the video right up here in the top right hand corner and that goes in depth on how you can animate objects. Another way to animate objects in PowerPoint is to use transitions. Over here on the left-hand side, I can see my cookie slide. 
I'll press Control D on my keyboard and that'll duplicate the slide. So now I have a second slide and it's identical to the first slide. On the second slide, I'll take my cookie and let me expand the size. We'll go with a bigger cookie. And I can also rotate. So let's go with maybe, let's say that orientation right here. Maybe a nice side view of the cookie. Up on top, I'll click on the Transitions tab. And there's a transition called Morph. I'll select that. And here we see that the cookie morphs from this location on the first slide to this location on the second slide. I can click on Preview right up here and we can see what that animation looks like again. Morph is extremely powerful and you can pull off some really complex animations that look beautiful. Now that we know all of the basics of 3D animations and also Morph, let's bring it all together and pull together a beautiful looking presentation. Here back in PowerPoint, I've already pulled together a slide that lists out all of the different products that we offer here at the Kevin Cookie Company. And I have three different 3D shapes already inserted onto my slide. Here I have a carton of milk, an essential beverage to go along with cookies. Here I have my chocolate chip cookie, and I also have the gingerbread man. These are all stock 3D images that you can find directly in PowerPoint. For the next slide in my presentation, I would like to give a deep dive on each one of these products and describe the different products. So first, I want to prep this slide. I'll zoom out a little bit by pressing Control and then moving my mouse wheel. Right up on top, I'll click on Insert, and here I want to insert a shape. I'll just go with a standard rectangle and then draw that over on the side. Here, I'll also adjust a slight slant to this rectangle and move it over. Up here, I'll click on Shape Fill, and then select the eyedropper, and let me select a color from this cookie. I'll go with this dark brown color. With the color selected, next, I'll go back up to the Shape Fill, and over here, let's apply a gradient to it. And I want to go with a dark variation. Here, I'll select this one. Also, I want to remove the Shape Outline. I'll click on Shape Outline, and here, let's select No Outline. This slide is now all ready to go. Over on the left hand side, make sure that this slide is selected. And just like we did earlier, let's press Ctrl D. That creates a duplicate, just like we did with the cookie earlier. And let's select the second duplicate slide. Over here, we can now make adjustments to this slide. I will take the logo and here I'll move it off the slide. I'll select our products and then delete that text. And next, we can now make adjustments to these different 3D objects. I will select the milk carton, and let me go with a larger shape. Let's make it large like that. And let's also apply some rotation, and then I'll move this off the slide. I'll do the same with the gingerbread man here. I'll also make him larger, and let me apply some rotation to him. Let's say maybe that way, and I'll move him off the slide. I'll now take the chocolate chip cookie, and let's make that a lot bigger. I'll go with this size right here, and then I'll rotate it so we can see all the detail on that chocolate chip cookie. Next, let's take that object that we created over on the side earlier, and here I'll pull that onto the slide. So it lines up just right near the chocolate chip cookie. Lastly, I'm going to enter in some text that speaks about the chocolate chip cookie here at the Kevin Cookie Company. Here I have a header and a description. And I think this slide looks very nice now. Over on the left-hand side, I'll select this slide, and then up on top, let's click into Transitions, and then Apply the Morph. And look at that, that looks beautiful. To see what this looks like in full screen mode, I'll go back to the Our Product slide. And on my keyboard, I'll press Shift F5. This launches presentation mode from the current slide. I'll click my mouse to advance to the next slide, and there you see that beautiful animation. It morphs and it also adjusts the 3D shape. Using the same technique as what we just did, you can go and you can add other products to the slide presentation. Here's the gingerbread, and here we jump to the milk. And this looks so beautiful using Morph and then also 3D objects. So far, we've just been using stock shapes that are available directly within PowerPoint, but you may not always find what you're looking for. Next, let's look at how you could find any type of 3D shape and then bring that into PowerPoint. One of my favorite websites for 3D models is sketchfab.com. You could click on the link in the top right hand corner. Here you see all these different categories with 3D shapes. But of course, I work at a cookie company, so let's type in cookie and see what shows up. 
Up on top, you have some different 3D models that you could pay for, but down below, you have all sorts of different free 3D models. And this cookie looks really nice and also delicious. In the top right hand corner, I can click on this download icon. And here I can download in a number of different formats. PowerPoint accepts several different 3D model formats, and one that they definitely accept is FBX. I will click on download. Now that I've downloaded the file, I can go up to the insert tab, and over here in 3D models, I can insert from this device. But an even easier way to do it, here I'll take the .fbx file, and I can simply drag and drop it directly into PowerPoint. Here I'll click on the file, and I can now rotate it just like we did earlier with those other 3D objects. And this is a really good looking cookie. Along with downloading 3D objects, you can also make your own. And a really easy app to use is called Paint 3D, and it's made by Microsoft. If you're interested in how to use this app, you can click on the link to a video in the top right hand corner, and that'll walk you through step by step how you can start building your own 3D objects. Lastly, you can also make 3D objects using AI. OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, recently released another model called Shape E. With this, you can type in a text prompt, like a chair that looks like an avocado, and then it'll spit out a 3D model. And I must say, that looks like a chair, and it also looks like an avocado. Or here, an airplane that looks like a banana. That certainly looks like an airplane, and it does look like a banana. This is truly impressive technology. And although these 3D models may not look perfect, keep in mind, this is all AI generated. That is really impressive. To generate your own 3D object based on text, click on the link in the top right hand corner and that drops you into a Google Colab notebook. Google Colab allows you to run code in the cloud, so you don't have to install anything on your computer. First, up on top, click on Runtime, and then change the runtime type, and make sure that you select GPU. It turns out that graphics cards are much more efficient at running these AI models. Here, I'll click on Save. Up on top, next to this first step, first we want to clone the GitHub project. Click on this Play icon, and then click on Run. Over on the left-hand side, I see this green check mark letting me know that this step is done. Next, I could change the directory, I'll click on Play, and that's also done. Next, I want to install Shape E. I'll click on this play icon and it'll now install the project. Keep in mind, it's installing it in the cloud, so this does not at all affect your own computer. That's now finished installing. Next, we need to import different machine learning libraries. Here, I'll click on play again. And next, we also want it to use the GPU or the graphics card, so here, I'll hit play. And next, here we need to load all of the different models. Again, I'll click on play. This step will take a little bit of time since it's downloading a model that's close to two gigabytes in size. With all those steps now out of the way, on this next step here, you could define the batch size. So how many different 3D models would you like this to generate? For now, I'll set it to one since it goes a little bit quicker. And right here, you can type in your prompt. I'll stick with the basics and just say a cookie. Here, I'll press on play. With this step now done, Next, we can now render the 3D object. I will click on Run. And check that out! There's my cookie as a GIF. That looks pretty good. And for the last step, we now need to get the cookie out of Google Colab so I could use it in PowerPoint. Right here, I will click on Run, and this will now export that 3D model. Now that this step has finished, over on the left-hand side, click on the Files icon. Here, I will expand this category, and here we see a file called ExampleMesh0.PLY. I'll click on the ellipsis for the three dots and then download this file. I finished downloading the file, and like we did earlier, I can take that file and drag and drop it into PowerPoint. And there's my cookie! You might be wondering, well, it looks like a cookie from the shape, but what happened to the coloring and the texture? Well, keep in mind that this is currently a V1. This is more just an example of what the technology can currently do. I wouldn't be surprised if, in the future, directly within PowerPoint, you could type in some text and it'll generate a 3D model with the texturing and the coloring, and you can do all of that from directly within PowerPoint. This AI technology is advancing so rapidly, and it's really exciting seeing some of the things that you can start to do with it. All right, well, you have now taken your PowerPoint skills to the next dimension.
To watch more videos like this one, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. And it'll probably be in 2D because that's how my camera and probably your monitor work. Thank <laughs> you.